Hey, what is up? My name is Chris and welcome to Coding in Public. I wanted to show you a cool Mac app that I really love, but even if you're not a Mac user, I hope to kind of teach you how to think about automation when it comes to web development. When you're doing web development, you're constantly repeating yourself over and over again. And whether you're just using uh, kind of macros that you can write in your code editor or something else, taking the time to set those up can massively improve the experience and let you focus on writing code rather than typing out stuff that you've typed out a thousand times before. Now this tool is called Keyboard Maestro and it's hard for me to sing its praises enough because it does basically anything you could ever want. But what I'm going to try to focus on is just a couple of things that are focused on web development rather than kind of everything you can do with it. It can literally type for you, move a mouse, click on images for you, fill out web forms, anything you want basically Keyboard Maestro can do. And uh, Keyboard Maestro 10 just came out. It somehow is getting better every time and it's done by a single developer who seems to also be like the nicest guy ever. All right, let me go ahead and just kind of walk you through three things I want to show you when it comes to Keyboard Maestro. So first of all, um, I'm going to show you just kind of basic things I use in web development. Now, the way this works is you can group your, my, your keyboard macros over here. I've got this group here for code editors, and you'll notice that I'm limiting it to where these macros only are going to fire in the two applications I use uh, for web development, Nova and Visual Studio Code. The macros themselves then live in this middle section, and once you select one, you can actually add different actions here. Uh, they're triggered by all kinds of events. I have this one by hotkey, but you can notice just all the crazy stuff you can do. Um, all these are triggers that then run whatever actions you have. And then these are all the actions that are available to you, and there's a ton of stuff you can do in them. Now, what I'm going to do is just show you kind of how I use these. So this is a console log thing I'll show you in a second. I've also got something that will dynamically create these clamp and um, things for pixels and rims, and then something that converts hex values to HSL values. So let me just jump in and show you that rather than talk about it forever. Um, so the one actually simulates keystrokes. And uh, so if I just hit my keystroke here, it just copies this, jumps to the end of the line, hits return, and then pastes it. That's what I've got right here. So it hits the right arrow with the command held down, it hits return, paste that in there, and it's just really quick to hit console log. And because I've done it in Keyboard Maestro, I'm not limited to it only working in the IDE I created that in. Whatever IDE I'm using, as long as I've added it to my list uh, for this folder, it will work in it automatically. I've also done a video before on how to do dynamic font sizing. So if I come over here um, and I want to add a font size, let's say font size, I might want to do my clamp of rem. I'm going to hit my little keyboard shortcut, and unlike the other one, this one has other ones that use the exact same shortcut. It's showing me what that shortcut is here, and then it gives me an option of which one I want to use. This is called a conflict palette, and I use these to my advantage by adding a bunch that have the same thing. So this would be like utilities, and that's why I've got it as a U. Then I can just keep typing, and it will just select the next one. So I want C, which gives me both that started with clamp, and then you might notice that little grayed out P and the grayed out R if I want pixels or rem. So I'll just do R for rem. Let me pull it over to this screen, and I'll do something like two rem at the smallest and maybe like six rem at the largest. If you're interested in how to use this clamp property and why I do it this way, I have a video. I'll add it to the description that shows you how to make this dynamic font sizing. That means I can come in here and as I pull up, it's going to get bigger until it locks in and then it dynamically sizes down as well using this cool clamp property and Keyboard Maestro figures out all this math for me so I don't have to do that. It can also convert hex values to HSL values like I mentioned. Again, it's that same conflict palette and just selecting it, now I can hit my little keyboard shortcut and it pops it all out here for me. Now, I the way I do it, I don't typically wrap them in HSL because I'm usually using these as variables. Um, but anyhow, all that to say, if I do this, it looks the exact same because it's a HSL value that corresponds exactly to that hex. I could change it though to like 1.6 and it would be dark or like 98, oops, 98. And it would go really light to where you can't even see it. How about uh, 80? All right, so just so you can see that you're dynamically shifting it, but it actually started exactly like that hex was. And all that is just with simple macros. So that's the first grouping of things I wanted to show you. It's basically using Keyboard Maestro to do things you regularly do when you're doing web development. Now there's lots of tools that can do stuff like this, so that's kind of impressive, but uh, there's other stuff we can do that's way better. So that's like beginning stages of using Keyboard Maestro with web development. If I come back over this way, 
Let me go to this folder here to show you a couple other macros I've created. We're going to start with this one called Epoch. And all this does, if I come up here, actually, let's see if it'll work in the macro. If I type Epoch with a, a comma before it, it actually just runs this function and then pastes that wherever my cursor is. And that's the exact milliseconds since January 1st, 1970. I use that for UUIDs and stuff like that. And again, there are other things that will do that. Where Keyboard Maestro really goes to the intermediate level is that it lets you inject JavaScript on a page. So if I come in here and click this CSS CT scan, there was a great talk given recently, and I'll show it to you in just a second. But basically, this guy's written up this little tool that I can actually execute in the front browser. So if I jump over this way, let me show you that here. Uh, this CSS CT scan basically is looking in the head of your document. If I come over here, this is the actual talk by Harry Roberts. I think these are just his slides. I'll make sure to add a link to the video as well. It was super helpful for me, and I thought it was a great talk. It just given a couple weeks ago. But he gives you this little tool that if you click on any web page or add as a bookmarklet, you can click it and it will actually analyze your head and basically tell you, hey, this is good or it's not good. So you can actually drag this little thing to your bookmark uh, bar and then click it whenever you're on a web page. But since it's JavaScript and I can just run JavaScript in a web page with Keyboard Maestro, why not just make it a macro? And that's exactly what I've done. I've just taken that text and I've added it in here. Now, in order for this to work, I do have to come up here and go to View and Developer here and allow JavaScript from Apple Events. But once you do that, you can just run it on a page. So here's a bunch of ones that come with this conflict palette. I'm only showing you this CSS scan right now, and I'm just typing it in right here. And it, you see it pulls up just the same. And I can do this on any web page without taking my hand off the keyboard. The nice thing about those conflict palettes is I can have like 15 or 20 on one keyboard shortcut, so I'm not constantly having to remember a bunch of different keyboard shortcuts too. Running custom JavaScript on a page also means I can write whatever I want. And so I've got this little custom pop-up I use, just a, a basic modal that I wrote that will inject into any web page I want, and then I can reference it with a bunch of different macros. So here I've got a macro that's going to check for anchor links on a page to see if they're broken or not, and it's going to run this custom pop-up first. Now that that stuff's in the DOM, I can actually reference those things in this little JavaScript I wrote this way. So I can come over this way, and let's go to this blog post layout. This is one I've done uh, recently on the channel. And I can come in here now and hit that same exact keyboard shortcut, and then I can go to check anchor links, and it will actually say, hey, there's no broken anchor links. And I can write in keyboard events, like the escape will close this, clicking off of it will close it, clicking here will close it, or clicking return will close it. Either way, I can keep my hands on the keyboard or do whatever I want. Let's actually make it have a problem so you can see what it does, though, if there is a problem on the web page when it comes to an anchor link. It's analyzing all the anchor links on the page, and basically telling me, hey, is there a reference on this page that references this? So if I come in here and have some random uh, anchor link that doesn't match anything, and I close this tag out, and then I run the exact same thing, so check anchor links, it's now gonna find it, and then it highlights it in bright red, it makes it massive, so it's hard to miss on the page. And if I've got several of these, it's really helpful just to glance through the thing and say, oh, here are things that I broke unbeknownst to me. So that's a really quick way to check a page to see if there's broken anchor links. And I'm doing this because Keyboard Maestro lets me inject JavaScript on the page. So this would be more like the intermediate level. You can just write JavaScript and inject it on any web page you're looking at and uh, use it like this to analyze your page, to analyze the head of the page. All that kind of stuff is super helpful and Keyboard Maestro lets you do it. We're going to go up one more level and that is to what's called a custom CSS prompt or custom HTML prompt, I think. Yeah, floating HTML prompt. So what I've done is I've written a full web page, HTML, CSS, and JavaScript, and I've just added a couple of functions that Keyboard Maestro gives me that allows it to interact with this little custom web page that we're gonna pull up. Then what it does is it analyzes what it gets back and it pastes in a link to a YouTube video that I have recently done. So I've got an API endpoint that I created just with the YouTube API that I'm hitting with this HTML prompt. So if I come up here and click my little keyboard shortcut, you'll see it pulls up the most recent videos from my channel. I can search for things like grid or whatever, and it will actually dynamically generate this list for me. And I can tab down and hit view all, and it will actually show me all the most recent posts. I think it's like the most, the 50 most recent. I've got a bunch of keyboard events, so I can click or double click or whatever I want. 
select one, hit enter, and then it will actually put it on my keyboard, my pasteboard, and I can paste it in wherever I'm at. So this has been super helpful when like writing up descriptions. In fact, if you're interested in this, I walk you through this in a blog post I did recently on my blog, where I'm actually showing you how it works here. I can just search for one, paste it in, and we're good to go. Again, that's super helpful for me when it comes to filling out descriptions for my videos. Um, and I walk you through kind of step-by-step, -step, give you all the code that I use, tell you how I got the API endpoint up, and uh, show you the actual macro here that you can download if you want. All right, well, I hope this has been a help for you if you're a Mac user. And even if you're not, and you're still sticking around, I hope just thinking through how you might automate things on your machine uh, would help you when it comes to web development. That can be something as simple as not duplicating, typing the same thing over and over again, or perhaps it's creating something more custom like this with Keyboard Maestro or some other tool that you might have. Well, thanks so much for watching. I will catch you in the next one. Happy coding.